Hello everyone, welcome to my next lesson on practical coastal navigation. First, I need to state my standard disclaimer. These navigation videos are for educational and explanatory purposes only. They are not intended to guarantee your safety on the water. Nothing, including these videos, can take the place of accredited courses from qualified instructors and developing your own navigation skills over time. You are responsible for choosing destinations and cruising areas that are within your own level of experience and ability. Any charts you may see in this video are not for navigation purposes. They may be out of date and they are for explanation purposes only. When you go out on the water, you are enjoying yourself at your own risk. This lesson is about understanding what Canadian charts tell us about water depths. Before we begin, one of the documents you should have on board in Canadian waters is called Chart 1. It provides a description of all the symbols used on Canadian charts. Starting in 2021, this publication will be available only online for download as a PDF document from the Canadian Hydrographic Service website. Paper copies will no longer be sold in marine stores. So when you're getting ready for the next boating season, Go online and check that you have the latest version printed out and on board. The Canadian Hydrographic Service is also responsible for all the paper and electronic charts we use in Canadian waters. Okay, let's jump in and talk about water depths and tides. Okay, so what do tides do? Well, they go up and down, of course. Here are some typical daily fluctuations in the heights of the tide. You can see there's quite a variation from day to day. Some changes from low to high tide are very slight. These are called neap tides. But at other days and times, there can be very large changes of 15 feet or more. These are called spring tides. They're also referred to as large tides. A large tide doesn't mean a high tide. It means a large change in the tide. There are large high tides, and there are large low tides. Tides fluctuate based on the alignment of the sun and the moon. When the sun and the moon line up during a new moon or a full moon, that's when you get the largest tidal changes. The Canadian Hydrographic Service annually publishes tides and currents tables for different regions. From these tables, you can determine the height of the tide at specific reference ports for any given date and time. These tables are also available for download from the Canadian Hydrographic Service website. In the next lesson, we'll look at how to use these tables in detail. In this lesson, we're just looking at various symbols used on Canadian charts related to water depths. Okay, so a big question is, if the tide goes up and down and the water depth is constantly changing, how do we decide what water depths to write down on a chart? Different countries do this in different ways. In Canada, we use a very, very low tide level as the zero reference line for all depths. Tide depths seldom go below this very low level. It's called the lower low water of a large tide. It's also called chart datum. This drawing is looking sideways at the land. It shows the land and seabed sloping downwards. These lines are the higher and lower limits of the tide heights. The lower one is called the lower low water of a large tide and the higher one is called the higher high water of a large tide as well. Tide heights rarely go outside these two levels. The lower of these two levels is used as the zero reference line for water depths. It's called chart datum. Depths on all Canadian charts are given as meters below this level. At any given date and time, the actual water height will be somewhere in between the highest and lowest tide levels. The heights of tides in the tides and currents tables are given as meters or feet above chart datum. So to determine the depth of the water at any location on a given date and time, you look up the tide height in the tides and currents tables for that date and time and location 
and then add it to the depth published on the chart. In the next lesson, we'll look at the details of how to use these tables. For this lesson, we're only looking at the information given on charts. So let's look at some depths and some chart colors used on Canadian charts. Here's a section of a chart shoreline with some colors and depths. All these numbers in the white and blue areas are depths in meters below chart datum. This one is 25.2 meters below chart datum. This one is 14 meters below chart datum. This one is 2.6 meters below chart datum. Each number is a depth sounding, which was taken exactly at the location where it's written on the chart. There are also depth contour lines. This contour line, for example, is 20 meters below chart datum. The depth is everywhere the same along a contour line, just like the contour lines you'd find on an elevation map. Lines spread further apart like this indicate a gradual slope downwards, which may be well suited to anchoring with an appropriate bottom type, and if it's well sheltered from wind and waves. Many lines close together like this indicate a steep drop-off. Sometimes, checking the depth with your depth sounder and comparing it to the depth contour lines can also be an aid to help you locate yourself. Okay, so what do these colors mean? These colors progress from white to light blue to darker blue to green and finally to yellow. White is deep water. White means the water depth is more than 10 meters below chart datum. Light blue and darker blue are just used as a warning that you're progressing into shallow areas, but they're still below chart datum. Light blue areas are 5 to 10 meters below chart datum, and dark blue areas are 0 to 5 meters below chart datum. Green is an area of land that covers and uncovers with the rising and falling tides. It's called intertidal. Sometimes you see it, but at other times it's covered with water. You may see it twice in a day, or you may not see it for several days. It all depends on how high the tide is and how much it's changing. The curly lines for this intertidal area indicate this region is rock, not sand or some other type of material. And finally, yellow is land. Land is always visible as it's above the higher high water mark. Even a very tiny speck of yellow on a chart is a bit of land that never covers, and it's likely to have vegetation or trees on it. Let's go back to this drawing and add in these colors just to see them relative to the highest and lowest tide heights. These are actually the same colors used on the charts. White is more than 10 meters below chart datum. Light blue is 5 to 10 meters below chart datum. Dark blue is 0 to 5 meters below chart datum. Then green is intertidal. It's land between the lowest low tide and the highest high tide. And finally, yellow is land. It's any region above the higher high tide line, and it's always visible. It never covers with water. So that's chart datum, and that's how depths are displayed on Canadian charts. But what about the heights of things in the intertidal regions? These lie between the lowest low tide and the highest high tide, so they're sometimes submerged and it would be very useful to know by how much. The heights of intertidal areas are given as heights above chart datum. An asterisk, like these ones, is the symbol for an isolated rock in an intertidal area. Yet, these rocks are located in areas of dark blue, which indicates water that is 0 to 5 meters below chart datum. So, what's going on here? The rocks are sitting on a seabed that's below chart datum, but the top of the rocks come up above chart datum. Each of these has a number beside it. The number is underlined, and it's contained in brackets. The underline is important. It means it's not a depth below chart datum. It's a height above chart datum. It's also called a drying height, because if the tide went down to zero, so that the water level was exactly at chart datum, then this rock would be exposed by 2.7 meters. All numbers with underlines are in intertidal areas because the number represents a height above chart datum. And the brackets mean that this number is for the thing beside it, because it couldn't be written over top of the symbol. Depths and heights are always written on the chart exactly where they apply, unless there's another symbol there, or the area is too small to write the number. In that case, the number is written beside its location, and is written inside brackets. Okay, there are a few more chart symbols we need to understand. Let's go back to our chart. 
This plus sign is another symbol for an isolated rock. But this rock is a rock that's below chart datum by 2 meters or less. That's 0 to 6 feet below chart datum. In other words, a very dangerous rock. If you're trying to locate yourself on a chart, and you're looking out and you can see a rock, then that rock is not this rock, because this rock you never see. It's below chart datum. So don't misidentify it. While an asterisk indicates a rock in an intertidal area that is sometimes visible, this is a rock you never see. It's below chart datum. Another very similar symbol is this rock with four dots. That indicates the height of this rock is exactly zero. It's at chart datum. It's called a rock awash at chart datum. I like to think of the four dots as water washing over the rock to help me remember that this is a rock awash at chart datum. And that means you're only going to very rarely see this rock, so don't misidentify it when you're trying to locate yourself. When you're looking at a chart, you have to think carefully about the meanings of these symbols. For example, the 0.2 meters written beside the rock awash is not contained in brackets, so it doesn't refer to the rock awash beside it, and it's not underlined, so it doesn't mean a height above chart datum. This is a depth of 0.2 meters below chart datum at the location it's written. Also, green areas look like they cover and uncover. They don't have grasses or trees. So you can use these areas to help you locate yourself as you progress through an area of small islands. So we're almost finished with this lesson, but there are a couple of more important things I'd like to mention. First, here's a general question. Why has Canada chosen the lowest of low tides as chart datum to be the zero reference line for depths on charts? The reason is that there will always be at least that much water depth in that location. You never have to do a calculation to see if the water depth might be less than what's written on the chart. Once or twice a year, the tide may go lower than chart datum, but at most by about a foot or so. And lastly, there are additional chart symbols you need to know as part of the Sail Canada Basic Cruising Standard. You can find these in Chart 1, but I also include relevant symbols you need to know in my Basic Cruising Manual on my Patreon website. This is a page from my Basic Cruising Manual. If you wish, you can pause this video to study this page. Here are a few more symbols, some of which I've discussed already. This page is also taken from my basic cruising manual. Lastly, this page shows the symbols used for various types of seabed. They're fairly self-explanatory. This will be useful for selecting anchorages with suitable holding ground, sand and mud probably being the most common type you should use for anchoring. Note that sometimes you need to carefully look where a symbol, such as an R, is located on the chart, because R means a rock bottom, but it also means a red colored light for lighted navigation aids. If you find a symbol on a chart and you're not sure what it means, get used to looking it up in chart 1. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. I hope that was all clear. In the next lesson, I'll cover the details of looking up information in the tides and currents tables.